Hello, welcome to the Art of Renovation Live. I'm your host, Paul Foster from Contact Renovations and Custom Homes. This week we're talking about kitchen appliances. This is basically the heart of your kitchen renovation. So um, this month we're talking about kitchens, that's our theme, and last week we spoke with uh, Cucina Bella, Rebecca over there, we were chatting about the cabinetry, and we both agreed that the appliances are the key issue uh, when it comes to planning your kitchen renovation. So here we are today. We're going to talk with Jerry Giesbrecht. He's co-owner over at Avenue Appliances. And if you've ever been into their showroom, they sell like, I'd call it like the Maserati of appliances. Um, there's lots of good appliances out there, but they have a beautiful showroom. So anyhow, um, so today the goal is to talk a bit about appliances, um, what to consider when you're planning your renovation, and then what you need to know about the appliances that are out there and available to you, because there are a lot of different options and it has a major impact upon how much work you need to do to accomplish your renovation or perhaps your, your new build. So anyhow, let's, uh, let's get Jerry on here. Uh, there's a better cover, I guess. So Jerry, I'll read out his bio here and then we'll, um, we'll send him the invite. I just want to make sure that they're here following before I get too far into all this. Bear with me for a second. There they are. All right, beauty. So. Jerry Giesbrecht, he's co-owner of Avenue Appliance. It, Avenue Appliance was founded in 1970. It remains a family-owned business, faithful to the original concept of providing community, the community with high-performance appliances, along with the benefit of having their knowledge, experience, and integrity. Um, this year is the 29th anniversary for Jerry and Faith owning the store, and they're very proud of that. Um, they invite you to come check out their boutique style showroom located on White Avenue in the Old Strathcona District. Like I said, it's a beautiful um, space and you'll get lots of photos of uh, from there today during the show. So, And then we can start chatting a bit about what's out there, what's available and things to consider because there is uh, there's definitely a lot. Hey, Jerry. Hi, Paul. All right, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us, or me, us, I guess, the collective us. Yes. All right. Glad to be here. Yeah, you know, um, you know what would be nice? You, when I, I met you last week at, at the showroom, and uh, I was asking some questions a bit about Avenue, and you told me the story. And maybe you can give us kind of the Coles Note story of how it started some of the background behind the business, because I think it's really interesting and, you know, it's what makes everyone tick ultimately. So, and I'll just throw some nice pictures from your showroom while you're doing that. Awesome. So just, uh, again, I'll try to do it in uh, as short form as possible. But uh, way back when, uh, 29 years ago, or actually more, because we've owned the store for 29 years, we, uh, I started working at a uh, small little vacuum cleaner store on White Avenue. And that is what we are, uh, that's what we were, um, but still is the same business uh, from that time. And uh, moving forward from um, uh, being a vacuum cleaner center and doing repairs and all of that, we were the first store in Edmonton to sell the Mila line of uh, vacuum cleaners. It was a bit of a bold step for us because they were a bit more expensive. If you take a look at uh, some of the brands that we were selling as far as vacuum cleaners go, the Hoover, Eureka, Panasonic, uh, this odd European vacuum cleaner came into the market. It was more than twice the price, but I could tell that there was something different about this product. So uh, we brought it in. One of the reasons was for uh, hyperallergenic uh, reasons. It had a, one of the first HEPA filters I've heard of. And so it became very, very successful successful for us fast. Uh, so much so that they took me to Germany to go see where they were made. Well, we not only saw the uh, vacuum cleaner um, facilities, manufacturing facilities, we saw facilities that manufactured appliances. And that opened up my mind to gee, I think I could do more than vacuum cleaners. Um, this would be uh, fairly exciting for me. So 
the uh, got the wheels spinning, got the uh, juices going as far as could we sell appliances. And uh, long story short, we um, moved into this facility we're in now, um, designed it in such a way to have a live kitchen. Mila said yes, we had a live Mila kitchen and we were a vacuum cleaner store that sold Mila appliances. And really that's, uh, that was the start of it. Um, from that point on, we just kept taking and uh, bringing on another brand and another brand and another brand. And the interesting thing with all of that that I've shared with uh, customer after customer is that these companies came to us. When they saw that we were selling Mila, they saw that we were doing well with it. They said, Jerry and Faith, that's my wife and business partner, I think that you could sell this other brand. Well, we were introduced to a brand new uh, brand we had never heard of before. Again, this being a new industry for us at that time. And we have grown into the store we are today over all of those years. We'll take a look at some of the brands. We'll, we'll talk about some of the brands possibly closer to the end of this. But that's who we are. We went from vacuum rebuilders of Edmonton to Avenue Vacuum Company to uh, Avenue Vacuum and Appliance to Avenue Appliance. And that has been our... Um, evolution to this time and we I, I should still or should say we still have a small corner in our store for the Mila vacuum cleaners because I still believe they're the best vacuum cleaner in the world and so we're very very pleased to still have that brand of vacuum cleaner too. Well thanks for that. Um, <clears throat> we got a question off the hop here from Radtech227. Nice stove he says. Do you think all appliances need to match? So that's a great that's a great question actually it's kind of like do finishes need to match what do you think about the appliance group what are your thoughts well it it depends we we have uh i i i would be the first person to say anybody who knows me would know that i am very particular i mean you could use the word picky there as well and so there are all sorts of desires and wants from our clients in some cases they just want all the appliances to be stainless steel and that's enough of a match for them we can talk about handles matching as well. If you, if you stick with one brand, then all of the handles are gonna match. And basically, usually in most cases, all the stainless steel matches as well. But you might find a dishwasher from brand A, you might find the range from brand B, and you really want these two, your criteria might simply be, I want them to simply be stainless steel. Right, so in that question case, for you. Yes. In this picture I'm showing in the background, are these all from the same manufacturer? Yes, that's a, that's our th live Thermador kitchen. Okay, so the, uh, in, in the image, and this might just be from the photo, it looks like the built-in, what is that on the left there? You got a, a microwave and down low is a wall oven? Well, below, or sorry, above is a built-in coffee system. Oh, okay. And below the coffee system is a wine center, a dual zone wine center. Between it and the 48 inch range are actually refrigerator drawers that are hidden. Got you. Is it the same finish on those two? Because I just want to point out like some people would never know, notice a slight difference in finish mm -hmm. on your stainless steel and others might, it might drive them crazy. So to me in the image, they look slightly different. Photo, you'd know best because it's in your showroom. Yeah, this is, uh, I love the question. It's, it's, a, it's a very, very valid question. It's one that we bring up with our clients uh, many times. So if we know that there's somebody who, who, like you said, it would just drive them crazy if they're not exactly the same, here's a point to make. The stainless steel that you see there is the same on all three appliances. It's the lighting in the showroom that is shining differently on each of them. So that's going to happen in your house as well. You're going to have one uh, one appliance, let's say you have your range on the east wall and you have your fridge on the north wall and they're kitty corner to each other. Mm -hmm. You can have a window shining light in and the two of them are going to look like two different types of stainless steel just simply because of the lighting. Absolutely. We see that with, with wall color sometimes too. Definitely. Same paint looks very different from a certain angle. Yeah. Um, we're, let's, let's bounce back to vacuums for a second. We have a couple sure. questions about them. So. Okay. You know, I know it's the appliance show, but the vacuums are technically part of our appliance. Well, um, they, were, we got, they were our beginning. Right. So underscore Wong M. Right. Are Dyson's all the hype? Uh, let me just turn the volume up here for a second. I thought I had it adjusted right, but when I joined in, my volume went down a bit. Gotcha. Well, um, 
without taking too much time in the vacuum end of this discussion, through all the years that I was involved in that industry, the vacuum cleaners had a bag that collected the dirt. And there is the, there's a positive, there was, has been a positive and a negative thing about that because as the bag fills up, your suction drops and so the become, machine becomes less effective. And so entered the world of bagless vacuum cleaners. Now, Dyson weren't the first to come into place, but there have been a number of different brands. We dabbled in it a little bit, but number one, and uh, again, I don't need to get into too much of a discussion bag versus bagless right now, but that's kind of the best way to answer your question about the Dyson is that as an asthmatic sufferer myself, um, I want to have something that's going to take care of the dust and not have uh, me breathe it in uh, or have to deal with it in the house. So a bagless machine is, is kind of cool because you don't have a bag that uh, is going to uh, shorten your suction lifespan of, of, of when the container fills up. But when you empty that container, you have a poof of dust. So we were, we were, we were um, Dyson became available to us as an option. We took a look at it and said, no, we're gonna stick with vacuums with bags. But the interesting thing is now Mila has bags as vacuum cleaners. And so we definitely are promoting them alongside our bag machines. But I believe that Mila came, and I know that Mila came on the scene the last um, out of all the different brands. I think what they did was they just tried to make it, and I believe they were successful in making it as, as uh, sound as possible. I believe that's one of the best units that's out there. And so Dyson, is it all the hype? Dyson is advertised like crazy. And so I think sometimes when you see something advertised a lot, it becomes the best in people's mind, but it isn't necessarily the best just because of the advertisement. All right, there you go. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so let's let's move on to the giveaway item here because I know a lot of people are excited about this one. So, okay. uh, thanks so much, Jerry and Faith have offered up this Meg um, electric kettle, and you can pick the color of your choice. There's red, there's white. There, no, See, there's, there's the blue. red one you have there. So we've got a red one here. Yeah, there you go. So to ent to be entered, you just got to comment. Hopefully, you'll ask an intelligent question. That'd be great. But you could also just comment something, and at the end of the show, we'll do a random draw. And the winner can go by and pick up this kettle from Avenue Appliance. And while you're there, you should check out the showroom and look at some of the amazing appliances that they have there. So That'd be great. let's talk a bit about the actual topic of today's show, the kitchen, the appliances. So let's just lay some groundwork here. So let's say you're considering a couple things. You're considering a renovation. You want to renovate your kitchen. Okay. So that's fantastic. Now you can do that in a couple of different ways. You can have a large scale renovation where you're going to completely gut the kitchen. You're going to reconfigure the kitchen. Maybe you'll annex space from a room beside it to make it larger, more open concept. If you're doing that, well then the world's your oyster. You can go pick any appliance group you want and we can make it work for you. Yeah. If you're considering a smaller scale renovation, you just want to, you know, maybe you want to upgrade the color of your cabinetry and you're not really changing the configuration then you're gonna be stuck with having to select appliances that for the most part are the same size of what you have now, unless you're planning to reconfigure your cabinetry. In which case, if you don't, aren't expanding the footprint of your kitchen, you might end up having less cabinet, more appliance. If you've always mm -hmm. wanted the 36 inch range, that's great. Your, yeah. your cabinets, you have to re remove some cabinet to do that. So mm -hmm. if you're building a custom home, well then again, World's Your Oyster will design everything around your appliance. So the way I like to look at it is, look, depending on your project, the appliance will either dictate the opening that's required or the opening will dictate the appliance that's required. Very okay? true. That's, that's two quick ways to look at it. So if you're mm -hmm. thinking about your kitchen reno, you're at the showroom, you love this big 36 inch unit, or you want a big double fridge. Uh, awesome. You need to think about what that means logistically for your home and your project. And then also we can get into a lot of different conversations about rough in requirements for these appliances, which we'll talk about a little bit today. I don't want to get hung up on the technical side of it all, but if you need a gas range or a gas cooktop, that's fine you have to consider what you have drawing gas in your home right now. And you might need to right. upsize the size of your main gas line. Mm -hmm. Like there's a bunch of collateral work that might need to happen to make this, 
new gas cooktop work for you. So um, we got another question from Rad Tech here. My fridge space is 36 by 72. Will it look funny if I get a smaller fridge in there? What do you think, Jerry? Uh, I guess, the, and I, I'm not sure we have a, re, a way of asking him this question back, but uh, what would be the reason for, for getting a smaller fridge? And maybe it's because he's found a certain uh, fridge he likes that you can't get in the 36 by 72 inch space. Uh, right. Part of my, uh, I guess the way I would look at this is he's putting a different fridge in now, or you're putting a different fridge in now, when would you potentially be renovating your kitchen? If you're not gonna renovate the kitchen at all for, for many, many years, I would probably try to find a fridge that would be uh, the same size, but you can do minor renovations. Uh, in fact, we have some beautiful uh, European fridges. It would be a case uh, very, very similar to what you're talking about, uh, where we have a 30 inch European fridge that happens to be uh, 80 inches high. So you can make that work quite nicely. The upper cabinet a lot of times is not used for much of anything. I know we keep our cookie, our Christmas cookie tins up there. And so once a year we pull them out. So if you can uh, make that upper cabinet smaller or pull it out all together, you can put some trim around that fridge top and sides, make it look beautiful. And we have, a, we have one particular fridge that we've done this with many times and it works, works wonderfully. Yeah, absolutely. And also, if the appliance doesn't come with a trim kit, then your cabinet maker or a good finishing carpenter can also make up some trim to help make it look like it's built in. There's lots of different options. Um, I think ultimately, um, you know, if it's going to look awkward, you might want to reconsider it. If there is a way to make it look like it fits, then that would be the way to do it, in exactly. my opinion. Exactly. And it could be long term or short term, and it still can work. Yeah. We had some beautiful, beautiful uh, options like that. Absolutely. And I would say that. Like most common now for us when we're designing our kitchens, um, we're looking at a counter depth fridge. So one that doesn't stick out quite as far into the kitchen and mm -hmm. they're often not as deep, but they're quite a bit wider. And yeah. so you get the same, you know, cubic inches of storage space inside, but they don't protrude out into your room and it looks a lot sleeker because it's flush, almost flush with your countertop. They're not actually flush, but they're, they're much closer. And it not only looks uh, sleek or Paul, it actually gives you more room in your kitchen. It's, it's unbelievable. You wouldn't think, okay, this, it's going to be six inches back. But if it's a two foot or a three foot uh, fridge itself, and you're, you're gaining six inches, three feet wide, your, your kitchen seems huge compared to the old fridge you had that wasn't counter depth. Yeah, absolutely. I would agree. And, <clears throat> and then you have to factor in the handle, depending on what kind of handle type you mm -hmm. have, how far that sticks out. I mean, it can really... Like if you get a pinch point between your, say your fridge and your island, then that can be a real challenging spot to be able to pass through when somebody's opening the fridge. So to get a few inches back can be a real game changer in your kitchen. There's another point there as well, if you don't mind. Uh, mm -hmm. Whenever we have a fridge and we have an island side by side or, or adjacent to each other, uh, we have a lot of questions. Uh, should I go with a French door fridge or a single door fridge? And so that, you know, that definitely is a topic all on its own. It's a question all on its own. But in a case where you have an island close by the fridge, that's when a French door is going to be very helpful because you can actually open up the doors. A person can still walk in between the fridge and that island. But a single door at that point is going to possibly block the path if the door can even open up all the way. Absolutely. That's definitely something to consider too. Yep. Uh, so Rad Tech saying, yeah, his fridge sticks out 11 inches. Yes, that's a... Yep. That's mm -hmm. a major challenge you're facing there, Rad Tech. Yep. You, you've mentioned a couple issues you've had on, on our last couple of shows. You should, you should give me a call at some point. We should talk a bit about it and look at your space. Uh, yep. I can get, get, at least give you some pointers to help you plan whatever you want to do yourself because I think uh, you have some, some layout issues for sure. And you can connect with me as well. Um, I have, a, like I say, a very particular fridge I'd love to talk to you about. Yeah, there you go. Uh, we had a question, which I think was about this photo. Is that a... Uh, hidden fridge in the picture and I would say yes that looks to me like that's a double um, and that's I guess that's, you can explain it what, what's yeah. that option called we call it uh, a panel fridge I would I would call that a fully integrated okay. so we can have uh, you can have standalone fridges or integrated fridges or fully integrated fridges so a fully integrated means your panel is flush with the panels beside you will have a little bit less space in the fridge because you are, are, are taking it back even further yet. If you take a look at a standalone fridge that's counter depth, the body of the fridge is the cabinet depth, but your doors stand proud 
of the cabinetry. And so here you're going to be losing two inches, maybe three inches to make it this way. But that is a six foot fridge freezer that you see sitting there. Right. Well, uh, what we call a bottom mount fridge. So there's freezers below, fridges on top. <clears throat> yeah. And that's not your average person's fridge. Um, this is something that is becoming more popular now. We're putting big fridges in our projects now, but you know, definitely people are beginning to understand the value of having all of that refrigeration space as opposed to you know, the second fridge in the garage. Exactly. Um, there's an awful lot of large homes being built um, or large homes being renovated or the kitchen, like you said before, the kitchen's being added on to. If you have this tiny little wall and you want to have six feet of fridge, it kind of isn't going to work. But if you have this huge wall and you want to put a 24 inch fridge in the middle of it, it's going to look like it's totally out of place. Mm -hmm. So some people have to put a bigger fridge in, even though they don't need so much refrigeration, just to make the wall look proportionate. And the same thing can have, can be said of a range. Mm -hmm. You put too small of a range on a big wall or the opposite, it just aesthetically doesn't work. Right. I, I would agree with you for sure. We have a variety of questions from all different angles here. So let's talk a bit about one from UC Howe here. What's the most reliable appliance brand in your opinion? So just so you know, guys, look, Jerry has specific lines that he carries. And I'm sure that to him, those are his favorite products. So Jerry, be truthful. And everyone else, do your research because there's lots of products out there. But I think if you want help picking something, you need to go see someone like Jerry who can explain to you what your options are, what brands he carries and why. Because, you know, if he's going to put his livelihood in the hands of a brand, he's going to pick a good one. So there you go. Exactly. So um, I think without putting an exact brand name to that answer, what I, how I'd like to answer it instead is to say, that we, we have a mandate in our store to provide quality appliances throughout uh, the clientele that, we, that, that uh, come and meet us. And so we have uh, different price ranges of ranges or fridges or actual kitchen packages as well. Uh, if you took a look at all of them being uh, all exactly the same quality, all the exact, uh, you know, 25 year lifespan, that sort of thing, they would all be all exactly the same price. And so then comes the question of which do I, which do I carry, which do I not carry? I can't simply, simply can't afford to have all of them in my store. Um, and so what we've done is we have, we have a number of different brands that would be sort of close to the price of each other. But then we also have brought in some other brands uh, where the price is a little bit less. But in doing so, we still try to make sure that the quality is there. That is something that we feel proud to sell and comfortable to sell to our clientele. When, when someone purchases a product from us, we aren't uh, at all finished with this client. This is the beginning of a relationship. So a lot of times when it comes to renovation, it's, it's one appliance. And maybe a couple of years later, they come to buy the fridge after they bought the range before. And so we want to be very uh, mindful of selling quality because we're going to run into that customer again and again. But it's also part of the, uh, like you said earlier on, it's just an integrity of selling quality products. And so I would encourage uh, that, that uh, person who, who wrote that question to, to come in and see us and come to meet us. Um, there's a number of different brands. If you check our website out, we believe on all of them. Um, I mentioned, uh, I'll just do a shout out to Mila for a second here. Uh, the one thing about Mila that could uh, help it fall into that category is they make almost absolutely everything in their lineup. And when you have a company that actually makes everything, as opposed to just putting their name on something, uh, you can feel a little bit more stronger about that company and about the quality of the products that they have. Absolutely. Well said. Um, we got a couple other questions here. So Diana Trang is asking, is it common that there's a gap between the range and the wall? I'm assuming you mean at the back side of your range. Oh, what? Yeah. Oh, oh, what? what? <laughs> no, just joking around. Of okay. course, I can't hear her answer, but. Uh, I, I think probably, answer. yeah, she probably is talking about behind the range. Um, there shouldn't really be a gap that's there, but it might have been because they've changed one range to another. Uh, there's a style of range called slide-in, and the old slide-ins used to have a space at the back, and the cabinetry, I'm sure you remember this, Paul, 
uh, the cabinetry had to be on both sides and a slice of cabinetry at the back, yeah. um, almost like two inches there. Uh, that's not the case in the brands that we have. There still may be some that are done that way, but now that even though it's a slide in, it goes right back to the wall. Yeah. And I guess one thing to consider too, Diana, is that, um, it depends on what you have. If you have a gas range or electric, sometimes it matters where your actual plug is located on the wall or your 100%. gas termination point. So, and your gas termination. Yeah. If those aren't roughed in, in the right location, then mm -hmm. that can actually cause your appliance to sit proud because they didn't, they, it's not going to recess into the unit as it was designed to do. So that's one thing to check as well, because it might be, uh, I guess, not as simple as that. If it's roughed mm -hmm. in the wrong spot, there's a bit of work needed to adjust that. But that's a very common thing they need to be aware of when you're renovating your space is that you have all that information from the appliance manufacturer or vendor. So it all gets roughed in, in well in advance of when the appliance package actually shows up. Very important. So let's talk a bit about that for a second here, mm -hmm. because um, I'm going to show you a picture if I can dig it up here. Um, mm -hmm. We just finished a rental on a house here not too long ago. And the client supplied her own appliance package. And it was nice, uh, nice stuff. We asked her to send the spec over <coughs> so that we can prepare um, it, you know, the kitchen for installation, have the cabinets manufactured, have the roughing work done. And mm -hmm. then the appliances showed up and were installed and she was not happy with the way it was installed because it was sitting um, a little proud of the cabinets. And this isn't the right image, but giving you, it was a section of a uh, double wall oven. Okay. And well, we looked into it. Well, why, why would she not be happy? And she, oh, it's supposed to be recessed. And we went, well, let's look at the specifications we received from, from the salesperson. And they had sent the wrong spec. And that appliance could be installed in two different ways. It could be installed recessed, so flush with the face of the cabinetry, mm -hmm. or it could be installed kind of face mount where it basically slides in and the trim kit sits on top of the face of the cabinet. Yeah. So what happened was the salesperson at the time had sent the wrong spec over and the client wasn't informed that there were two options for install. And then it went from us into our cabinet producer and we manufacture it accordingly. And I guess I'm telling you the story because it's very important that when you go and buy your appliance package, you're getting it from somebody who understands the product, how it can be installed, and the right information is communicated well in advance. Because if not, you can end up with, like appliances are one of the last <coughs> things that we put in on our kitchen renovations. Mm -hmm. At that point, we're, we're almost done. The appliances get buttoned up, and away we go. And if there's an issue on install at that point, it's, it's an issue. It's a, for the client, for us, for everybody. So uh, do your due diligence. You know, make sure you talk to somebody who knows what they're talking about. And Jerry, I'm sure that you're well aware of this as a, as a common kind of a gap mm -hmm. in the industry. And we want to talk about this ahead of time. So you brought up, a, 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 there's a couple of th different things to, to bring up here. Is that you had mentioned that the appliances are one of the last things that uh, go in a house. Whether it's a house build, whether it's a renovation, the appliances are sometimes the last item that gets placed in the house. What's interesting is the appliances sometimes are one of the first things that are chosen before the renovation happens and before that house build happens. And the reason is you, if you're trying to design your house or trying to design your kitchen space or, or a enlarged kitchen space, if you have it that way, uh, you need to know what size of appliances you're going to have to determine the size of the kitchen that you're going to have, which will then help determine the size of the house that you're going to have. So although the are the last thing in they're the first thing you talk about absolutely and so this is where you have the discussion of do you need a 36 or do you need 30 do you need six feet of fridge or is 36 inches going to be fine for you for the fridge and so we uh we get excited when a client comes in and they have an, an empty canvas as it were and they are just coming to dream for their uh, their, their new kitchen and you know they they don't know what size to go with and so we have a chance to talk to them about why you would go larger why you would go smaller do you need to go larger do you need to go smaller we don't always just try to upsell you know to the larger fridge or to the larger range you know honestly if you use two burners all your life you only ever use two do you need a 48 inch eight burner range Right. Um, but if you want it, of course, we'll be happy to show you what we have in 48 eight burner ranges and help you get into that. So that is uh, one of the aspects. The other thing is you had mentioned how uh, wall ovens, for instance, or even ranges, fridges, 
how they can be installed, either they're flush or they're, uh, we call them proud or, or flush mount, uh, same sort of thing that you were talking about. And so because wall ovens can be inset, because they can be flush, because they can uh, stick out and be proud, we have them done both ways in our showroom. Um, my preference is one way of those two, but I don't want to have my showroom all exactly the same. So if you, if, taking a look at that picture you have right there, the coffee system, the wine center below, they're both totally flush with the cabinetry. It looks spectacular, it looks beautiful. Uh, between the range and that wine cooler, as we talked about earlier, are some 100% uh, built-in uh, fridge drawers. But you see the range behind it. The range is totally proud. It's what we call the Grand Pro. It's made to be professional looking, made to stick out into the kitchen like that. And so those two looks can even complement each other. But when it comes to a wall oven, you can have a wall oven perfectly flush, or you can take that same wall oven and make it proud. So when a client is dreaming about their kitchen and they're in our showroom and they decide on, so for instance, that's a Mila kitchen you're looking at there. They decide on that Mila uh, steam oven and that oven that's below it on the warming drawer. We need to let them know, okay, when you're talking to your cabinet company, you need to let them know that you've seen it flush. Oh, what do you mean? So then we talk about the flush proud thing with them. Ask them then if they like this look or if they would like it to be proud. We walk them over to another kitchen in the showroom, show them what proud looks like. They decide one way or the other. We make notes. Our client would like it this way. When we contact the cabinet company herself, because we do that too, we'll say, and we have the notes, customer wants it flush because they saw it flush in our kitchen. This is what they expect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very important. Absolutely. Communication. Very, very important. Okay, let's talk about the giveaway <clears throat> item. We've got a Smeg um, kettle. You can pick your color. Pick the blue. What other colors? Blue, white. Oh, there's a. I've got the wrong names because to me it's blue or green. But there's other types of blue and other shades of green. Gotcha. But there's a, a beautiful light blue. I like green. Uh, there's black, white. There's the red. Um, I believe this one comes in pink as well. So there's uh, quite a few different options. Yeah. And we don't have all of them in stock, but. Definitely, uh, if you can still come and uh, take a look, and if you're the one who wins it, then just let us know what color you'd like to get, and we'll bring it in for you if we don't have it. Oh, that sounds like a lucky winner. All right, so enter, uh, just comment, ask a question. Um, yeah, engage with us. And then at the end of the show, mm -hmm. um, we'll do a random draw, and we'll announce the winner. You can go pick it up from Avenue Appliance and check out their showroom, grab the kettle. Away we go. Okay, so I want to... Let's talk about some couple specific things here for a second. So I'm gonna show okay. you a photo here. Just bear with me while I while I pull it up. Do do do. This Instagram platform, this is probably the one drawback is the way we find photos. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about range hoods for a second. Because it's a mm -hmm. very important appliance. Definitely. It doesn't get enough attention. It's a hard working beast. It mm -hmm. keeps your home clean and your air <laughs> breathable. Um, and, but you have some options here and there's some things to consider. So here we have a range hood. It's ceiling mounted. Um, you can imagine you need to be pretty precise with where you run the ducting for this thing so that mm -hmm. when we install it, it's directly centered over your, in this case, your range oven below. Mm -hmm. Now, if you like the look of that, that's fantastic. But there's another option which is becoming more and more popular, which again poses some other challenges, is here we have one, we, there's no range hood. And it's because it's a downdraft unit. Mm -hmm. So that's something to consider is, you know, do you like the look of having the range hood and there's different ways you can present them, right? They can be ceiling mounted, they can be wall mounted, um, like this. We have yeah, someone that can be, they can be uh, built in. Um, I'll pull some more photos up here as we're, chatting there's one that's kind of got a built-in look that we did um there's a and, lot of different choices yeah yeah and or you can go with something where you have a downdraft unit and mm -hmm. therefore you have no obstruction if it's in this case it's in a peninsula you have no obstruction for your line of sight from the kitchen space into the dining room mm -hmm. right and i guess my question for you jerry would be are most appliances now available with that option like can you buy a uh, a separate component that you would, that could work with most appliances to add this as a feature or an option, or is it something that's very specific? You buy a unit that's integrated in. 
Um, it is an option to go downdraft. Uh, so if you're talking about that, uh, let's talk about downdrafts to begin with. Um, actually, I will take one step back first. Hood fans are hugely important. And whenever uh, a client is talking to us about a range, if you don't mind me kind of going down the path this way, mm, no problem. Uh, when someone is talking to us about a range or a range top, especially if you're talking about gas, um, we have, uh, you know, we'll, we'll give them all the information we can about that particular product. We'll do all the comparisons that we can, brand to brand, um, BTU size, you know, for, for awesome boiling or whether you uh, have, a, have a smaller BTU uh, need for some, some awesome simmering and, and in between. But when it comes to having a gas cooktop uh, or, yes, a gas cooktop or a range top or a range, it's imperative to have the correct ventilation above it or in this case a downdraft which we'll talk about in a second uh, it's important to have enough uh, of the airflow to work with that range and so we'll get into that in a minute but i just want to just want to uh, speak to that just briefly when it comes to uh an over the hood uh like a ceiling mount like you said in an island or whether you go a wall mount or whether you go downdraft uh, you're going to have some different levels of effectiveness there as well Mm -hmm. So a downdraft, we like to see a downdraft uh, connect with either an electric or an induction cooktop, but we hey, don't. Hey, Jerry, I'm going to interrupt you for a sec here. Mm -hmm. Charles C. is asking, what does downdraft mean? Why don't we just give a bit of background for him on that? Certainly. So you can't see it, but in this picture at the back of the range, there is a uh, probably two and a half inch wide by the full length of the range bar that will rise up after you, when you push a button, and it'll rise up depending on the brand. Uh, 12, 14, uh, 12, 13, 14 inches high. And the suction will be then taken from the side of that. The air is then taken down and is exhausted through. So um, that's, and then when you're done with it, you push it back down again and it's gone. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't impede any views. It isn't as effective as having a fan on top because when you are cooking, whether you have, uh, and this this is the important thing is when you're, when you're looking at, uh, actually doing the cooking. We, we talk to our clients and find out if they're uh, uh, doing chef style cooking or they do craft dinner or you know what it is that they're gonna be making. And uh, if it's a busy household, if you have a lot of odors that you need to take care of, uh, there's gonna be steam that's gonna come off that cooktop. Uh, there's gonna be, uh, well, if, if we're talking gas, there's some of that uh, a gas, um, uh, just being careful for that as well. But you have grease. And so you have grease and steam. And that can affect your cabinetry. Um, I know that uh, Rebecca from um, Cucina Bella last week and a lot of the other companies that we deal with that, um, that uh, manufacture and sell uh, cabinetry, they understand that we have to be careful to protect that cabinetry too. So they're gonna explain that to their clients. We're gonna also explain that to the clients as well. And so moisture, steam, um, that comes from the moisture and also the grease. So if you have a hood fan above, you're gonna capture it better. So that picture there is perfect. It's what we have, what we call capture area. So yes, it's a big commercial looking fan and you may not be a fan of, uh, sorry, the fan of uh, the look of that, but you see the front of that is basically flush with the front of the range. And an important thing there is you have burners at the front of your range, you have burners mm -hmm. at the back of your range. And you wanna be able to take care of all of the uh, steam and such from all of the burners, not just the back ones. So you can get a beautiful looking uh, flush mount type of, uh, of hood fan that looks beautiful in the kitchen, but it's going to be effective for the back two burners, not for the front two. Right. And so again, this is a perfect uh, an example of capture area. And so we're, we're capturing it from front to back. Um, when the steam rises, it may want to go past the front of it a little bit, but you've got suction happening, which is going to be drawing that steam into that uh, up, upside down, uh, or it's not upside down, but it's a canopy uh, mm -hmm. that's above, yeah. Absolutely, and I would say that, you know, like everything that we do when it comes to renovation or custom home build, I think it's very important that you consider your fashion element and your function aspect mm -hmm. of it as well and in this case in this example they've done a great job of combining them. it's a beautiful looking hood but super functional it's going to mm -hmm. catch all that steam and grease that's, that's rising up in smoke and like i know at my house my range hood doesn't protrude very far out over my 
my range. So this exact problem I have is whenever something on the front is frying, yep. that odor, that vapor, all that stuff just wafts out into my home and it, the whole place smells like bacon. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with the place smelling like bacon, but <laughs> maybe you don't like the smell of bacon or it's garlic right. or whatever, but uh, there's more to it than just the smell. It's the grease and such that's hitting your Absolutely. ceiling and going all over your cabinetry. Right, and without going too much further down the range hood road here, uh, we've talked about CFM. So the volume of air that these fans can pull out mm -hmm. is going to be dictated by what appliance is burning below it. So there's a, if yeah, you've there's got... A yeah, sorry. Yeah, if you got an eight burner gas cooktop and it's, you're going to need a pretty powerful range hood above that to extract that air from your home. And then it goes a step further. You then need to look and potentially consider a makeup air unit because if you pull out too much air from your home, it can start pulling dirty air up from mechanical rooms and things of that nature. So um, there's, it's, I won't go too far down that rabbit hole, but when you're planning your reno, especially when you're looking at these big beefy appliances, you need to really sit down with your contractor or your salesperson at the appliance mm -hmm. store to talk about the requirements and make sure they're considered before anything is in production, because we might need to do some special rough in changes to your kitchen to set it up for a successful install and operation later. Anyhow. And that's very important to us. Um, we're not in it just to sell the appliance or we get to sell this huge range. It's very, very powerful. We talk about the hood fan right away at that point. It's, it's important to know what you're up against with exactly what you're saying. Um, and that's something that at, at, at Avenue Appliance we do. We, we don't try to hide anything. We, we bring out all these points that we possibly can. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. You know, <laughs> for anybody who's just tuning in, this is the Art of Renovation Live. We're talking about kitchen appliances. I'm your host, Paul Foster, and I have Jerry uh, here from Avenue Appliance, and we're talking about all things kitchen appliance. Um, let's talk about this, this fridge for a second, because we're mm -hmm. talking about fashion and function. Yeah. This one is an eye catcher. I love this and, fridge. Um, tell me a bit about the, the Smeg line, this fridge, and like this is a smaller unit. What would this ideally be intended for? Uh, well, I think where it's where it's manufactured, it's it's manufactured in Italy, so this this product comes from from there. Uh, you have much different kitchen spaces there. They're they're smaller uh, in Europe. We find an awful lot of their appliances are smaller to begin with. They they shop for groceries every day. They don't have to have a huge refrigeration compartment. Um, this is actually uh, a perfect size for that. In in our world and our uh, houses that we have here, this may be in the downstairs bar. Right. Um, and so it might just be full of beverages, basically. There's a tiny little freezer um, inside at the top. But uh, this is one beautiful, stylish piece. And uh, I specifically wanted this one for the eye catcher. And this of it, so it has the, uh, the Italian flag painted. Uh, they have one with the British flag, one with the American flag. They even have one with Mickey Mouse now, I understand. <laughs> but you can get these fridges uh, in whatever color you want to as well. So the Smeg kettle that we're giving away uh, that you that we talked about being in different colors, these fridges are available in different colors as well. And there's one that's slightly larger that has a freezer compartment at the bottom with a separate door. So they've even tried to make something a little bit bigger for the North American market, but these are still just 24 inches wide. So this isn't going to go in your big major kitchen, but it's going to go someplace in your house and totally be an eye stopper. And it's built well. It's it's a beautiful, beautiful product. Absolutely. Let's let's talk about some some bigger fridges. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so configurations for fridges they come in a variety of different layouts, right? So you can have. Um, well, why don't you talk about it? You talk about them, and I'll go looking for pictures to support. Okay. Okay. Well, this one in particular. Uh, you see two doors, you see a fridge and a freezer, and most people would think that's basically all you have there, but you don't, there's more. So not only does the freezer, uh, uh, which is to the left, this is an 18 inch, uh, uh, 30 inch uh, um, package. So this would be your 48 inch fridge. Uh, this particular freezer does have a, a built in ice maker in it, but the three drawers that are in the fridge area, the top two drawers have something called BioFresh, and the bottom drawer, <clears throat> excuse me, the bottom drawer has something called BioFresh Plus. And this is unique to Liebherr, and this is the company that manufactures this fridge, comes out of Germany, where you actually have uh, a different type of, or a different amount of humidity 
uh, particularly set into those two drawers. And then even it's different in the bottom drawer and also temperature as well. So your bottom drawer is almost froze, freezing, almost frozen, but not quite. So luncheon meats, cheeses, uh, certain foods are going to last way longer in that. And then you can uh, have uh, another temperature in those other drawers as well. So you get uh, three different environments in one fridge. And a number of different companies try to do sort of these the same sort of things. But this particular company, uh, this particular fridge that we see here, this appliance company only manufactures fridges. They don't manufacture anything else. And when you focus on one brand, you can make something quite spectacular. And so that's what we feel about, about this particular brand of fridge. Nice. We got a question here from Mel Chowong. I'm pronouncing that wrong, I'm sure. Sorry, Mel. Uh, the bottom drawer freezer allows wider items. Would you recommend this more? I guess you mean it's kind of more the chest or the bottom pullout. What are your thoughts of that? Um, yes, there's, there's a, I, I, would, I would say it's a personal preference. So there's, there's a picture of one right there. There's another one there, I guess. And, and there's another one there as well. What, it's what's behind the freezer drawer when you pull it out, because not all of them are the same. And even in our showroom, not all of them are the same. You can have one big wide open area in there. And I had a client in even just this morning that said, you know, they don't like that. Uh, they have to go digging just like a freezer chest. They want to have more compartmentalization if they can. And so some of these actually have, you open up that drawer and you have another two, uh, one or two drawers inside yet. So you actually can um, layer your food in some different drawers for, for better organization. Um, this is one in particular, uh, I'm glad you showed this picture. Uh, it doesn't really matter what brand this is, but this is a pretty common one that people see. And it kind of has this mesh basket. The interesting thing with this, however, is um, and a lot of people, not a lot of people will think about this. And, and even though we promote this particular brand and this fridge very highly, we point out some of these differences and things that, that are important. When you open up that freezer, because there's all of the uh, uh, gaps or all of the holes in that, in that mesh, a lot of cold air escapes the, the moment you open up that freezer and guess what it goes in? The warm air that's in, the, in the, the kitchen and you close the door. And that isn't necessarily amazing for the long lasting, uh, for, for keeping foods long, lasting longer in a freezer. So some of the ones that we have are a solid plastic bin as opposed to this. It may not look as strong, but it actually keeps the cold air in better. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, those are some of the things we will, we will talk about and, and discuss as well. Beauty. We got uh, about 13 minutes left here. Boy, it went by fast. <laughs> I know, it blows by. I told you, yeah. it's, it's mm -hmm. crazy. It's, we get chatting and it's a lot of fun and we can learn a lot here. Let's talk about ranges for a bit because I think that's kind of the – you know, the crown jewel of the kitchen quite often mm -hmm. is that range. Um, for anybody who's tuning in, this is the Art of Renovation Live. We're talking about kitchen appliances. I have uh, Jerry here from Avenue Appliance. And we're talking about your kitchen range. Mm -hmm. So we talked a bit about, you know, uh, cooktop versus... Um... Oh, I'm forgetting now. Anyway, oh, there was top. a range top and cooktop. So yep. maybe we can talk a bit about the difference between this. This is neither of them here. I'll go pull up the appropriate image. Bear with this me. actually isn't a bad picture to start with though, because if okay. you take a look at the top of this range to the going down to the top of the door and you were to cut that off, that would in effect be the top of this range. Right. And so when you have a range top, it basically is exactly that. It's everything except the oven below. You have all the knobs in the front. You have this big beefy look. And if you find a picture of that now, Paul, that'd be excellent. Yeah, I'm but looking. basically the top of this range. And so it, it does get, that's the range top right there. Now that's, I think the world's first, if I'm not mistaken, induction range top. Uh, usually you see them in gas, but this is a 36 inch uh, five burner induction range top from Italy. It's, it's beautiful, it's spectacular. But you see it looks bigger and more commercial in a sense than if you were just gonna have a cooktop, which gets inset into the countertop. Mm -hmm. That's a difference there. So when you choose between a range or a range top, here you have a cooktop and a wall oven going underneath. Uh, that definitely is a European look, European style. Um, there's a bit more that goes into designing this. Maybe there's a lot more, Paul, you can say, uh, yeah. that goes into designing something like this. It's so much simpler to just have a hole and throw a range in, but there is a different look to this. And so uh, we have clients who specifically want this. 
In this, in that particular case, uh, there was actually a 36 inch cooktop above a 30 inch range. And so that, that's how you can get the cooktop that you need. And, but you didn't need to have a 36 inch all, all full range that was there. All right, we had a question here from uh, Ichibum. Are induction ranges becoming more popular now? Does it take a lot of electricity to run? Um, if I can comment on that, um, they are more popular. We've, we've been installing more of them in the last few years. Um, definitely you need to be aware of your electrical requirements before you go ahead and commit to purchasing the induction range or because we've had one before where we did one in a penthouse apartment somebody went and bought the appliance package didn't know mm -hmm. we needed to run a 60 amp circuit and the electrical panel was all the way across the unit it there was thousands of dollars of repairs needed but then we cut and yep. ran a new electrical line for that specific induction range so um there you go. Buyer beware. Make sure you know what you need before you go and install it or purchase it. And again, um, we talk about that right at the outset. Um, you know, we, we don't actually do the electrical work ourselves or the plumbing work ourselves or the HVAC work ourselves. We have experts uh, who do that for us and work with us. But at the time of purchasing that hood fan, as I said, we'll talk about the requirements you may need to think about. When it comes to an induction cooktop, yes, there's more electrical requirements there. We will get you those specs. We'll let you know what the amperage is and let you know that you need to know that before you decide to buy from us. It's incredibly important. Absolutely. We should do last call on our giveaway. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna try pull up the picture. It's on the other end. Of I can the show it again here. Sure. All right. There we are. At the Smeg um, electric kettle. Thanks so much for offering this up. Um, if you've entered a comment, ask the question, you're in the draw. You, uh, I'll be announcing the winner here probably in about five, six minutes. So if you haven't answered yet, then just ask a question, make a comment. Um, yeah, Jay Hua, yes, wow actually enters you into the draw. There you go. <laughs> Um, okay, so is there anything you want to talk about, Jerry, when it comes to appliances at this stage? Uh, I think we didn't uh, necessarily talk about the difference between, say, gas and induction, because that, that's one of the questions that is asked all the time. You know, why would I want to go one way or the other? Mm -hmm. um, in, in the old days, we had electric ovens and we had gas ovens. And so there is the, there is the beauty of having gas. There is, uh, and there, one of the things, of the things with gas is you have instant heat when you turn it on. Um, as opposed to uh, t taking time for the element to get hot. And then you have perfectly controlled heat. As soon as you turn that flame down, the flame isn't there anymore. So your, your temperature is controlled very, very nicely. Now, some people are scared of, uh, of gas. They don't want to have it in their house, either they have uh, children or grandchildren, mm -hmm. um, or, or various reasons that they don't want to have live flame there. Um, or there's the clean up, cleaning up of a gas cooktop. There's just more to it. Grates that have to come off. You have to disassemble a little bit to get those things clean. But now we have entered into the world uh, quite, a, quite a few years ago, actually. Um, and that is, I believe, a picture of an induction cooktop there mm -hmm. um, with the glass induction cooktop. Now, if you've never heard of induction, uh, this is uh, an amazing, amazing uh, invention. Uh, made many years ago, but more, more uh, recently uh, brought into the North American market, where you have, in a sense, an element below the glass that connects magnetically to the pot. So the pot has to be ferrous. It has to be magnetic for this to work. But you have instant connection from the element to the pot, making the pot the element itself. It can't get any faster than that. We've done tests in here with induction cooktops and with gas cooktops, and they basically are, are on par. Um, so what happens with your old electric glass top is your element has to get hot. It takes a while to get the glass hot. The glass becomes red hot. That finally gets the pot hot. Then you get the water hot. Now you try taking that boil to a simmer and you can't because the glass is too hot below it. So you got to take it to the next burner and mm -hmm. wait for that to heat up into simmer just to get it to the simmering. So for induction, you have the instant heat of gas. You have the instant control of gas and you have the easy cleanup of the glass. So what are the drawbacks of, uh, of induction? It's glass, it could scratch, and it mm -hmm. could break if you're not careful with it. Um, it does cost more if you're looking at, uh, at your budget. Uh, gas is gonna cost you less than induction, but maybe you put your investment into the, into the range uh, and you wanna go induction with that. And then there is the electrical requirements that we just talked about. Yeah, of course. And if you do go induction, you're right, you need to have 
uh, specific pots and pans. So mm -hmm. consider that as well. Courtney yeah. uh, D48 just pointed that out. Yeah. Oh, You're, you don't have to spend a lot of money on pots and pans. They just have to be magnetic. True enough. There you go. So we have a winner. Um, and it's Courtney D48. Look at that. Congratulations. I'm in on your last comment. And I guess you must have had one earlier to be to be in the draw. Honorable mention goes to, I'm not going to give honorable mention. That's just going to bump <laughs> someone out for almost having one. I know, almost. Yeah. Yeah. So we, all right, Courtney, congratulations. We'll, uh, we'll connect you after the show here. I'll send you a direct message. Make sure you're following me so I can actually send you a message. Um, yeah. Let's talk a bit about this for a second. I know this isn't really right up your alley right now, but um, this came up when I was, I had Urban Granite on the show. Mm -hmm. We were talking about countertops and this is a product called Dectin and basically it's heat resistant and you can actually put these gas burners directly into the countertop, which makes it super easy to clean, which in my opinion is great. That's part of why I do like the induction units because it's such an easy surface to clean, but uh, I also do like the, the clean look of this is a nice, a nice combination. Yeah, it's a pretty nice look for sure. Yeah, I don't know how, you know, practically, I don't know much about the actual appliance component here, but um, it looks pretty slick. There's a number of different brands that have this. There's a, there's a brand that we've been looking at as well. We haven't said yes to it yet, but uh, there's a bit more work that goes involved in planning for this for sure. So there are, there are more chances for hiccups to happen when you're doing something like this. Um, what's the cost of that countertop and can you afford to make a mistake when, when these are being installed? Absolutely. It shouldn't be that big of a deal, but when you're putting a cooktop in a range top, you're making a square hole. You kind of can't make it wrong, although I have seen that happen, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But there, there could be a bit more that goes into making this happen. Yeah, I think the point, like this is kind of like the tip of the, the pencil here. I think ultimately you need to be very exact with everything you plan in your kitchen renovation from the mm -hmm. specifications you get in the beginning from your salesperson to what you then convey on to your cabinet maker, to what you talk to your electrician and your plumber about and your HVAC mm -hmm. contractor to make sure that everything gets put exactly where it needs. The openings are the correct size. Yeah. It can support the appliance properly. You have the right clearances. And when it comes time to the install, everything fits. hundred um, percent. You know, and I think, I don't like to call myself an expert, but any good contractor kind of knows all of this. Enough of it, at least, to make sure that everything gets put in the right place at the right time. There's an order of operations. Mm -hmm. There is very much a, a need, a checklist to go through and confirm various aspects for each appliance. So an, an install like this you see here is, again, just it's just a whole bunch of small moves to get it all positioned into the perfect um, prep for the installation, right? So um, the kitchen renovation, it's a game changer in your home, but I've seen some stinkers where it was just a heartbreaking waste of time and money and energy yeah. because they didn't no bring wants somebody to see in. That. No, I, you know, like you have to know what you're doing. So uh, you want to talk about appliances, you need to go see Jerry at Avenue Appliance. Um, we'll call him the appliance master. Go over there and see him. He'll educate you and make sure that you understand what you're looking at and what you might need to consider for your kitchen. There's a lot of implications when it comes to picking um, any specific appliance, whether it be it's the clearance needed to fit the appliance, the roughing required to do so. Um, there, there's so much to consider. On the technical side of it all, when it comes time to actually do your renovation, you need to pick a good contractor because if you want this all to come together and you have one of those kitchens where you walk in and you're, you're wowed by how beautiful it is, but it actually all works yeah. and there's no kinks and pinch <laughs> points. You need to talk to a decent contractor about that. Exactly. So, um, and we, I should just point out, we love working with the contractors themselves. Uh, we'll send all the specs to your, to your electrician, plumber, a cabinet maker or a contractor or all of them. Uh, but we want to make that happen so we don't get the wrong specs going to anyone. Absolutely. So you need to reach out to Jerry. There's their information over at Avenue Appliances. Uh, they're on White Ave. Look them up. You have appliance questions. He's the person to talk to. Absolutely. On the flip side, you got something bigger in mind, more than just appliances, then you can reach out to me. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to hire a general contractor, then just pick my brain. 
I'm happy to help you jump over the landmines and make sure that you end up with a great project either way. It's all about making sure that uh, people are happy with what they've purchased. I love what I do. I'm happy to share my experience. Thanks for joining, Jerry. This has been the Art Renovation Live. We'll see you again in a couple of weeks. Take care, everyone.